Hi, and welcome to this week's edition of the Las Vegas Advisor Weekly Update with Anthony and Andrew. Today is Friday, July 12th, and it is hot going into this weekend. 2024. That's right. The year is 2024, and this is the hottest year it, ever. It's important. They're going to remember this, man. There's you know records being set all over the place, 120 degrees. Boy, you're not kidding. I mean, you know, the record before, we talked about this. You know, I hate to keep talking about the heat, but... It's never been like this. Yeah, you know, it's like I mean, living on another planet. Yeah, it was 117, you know, five times that it hit 117, and that was a big deal. You couldn't get over it. And all of a sudden, it goes from <laughs> goes to 120. Yeah. And it, it, that was Sunday. That was last Sunday. And it hasn't stopped. I mean, since then, we've had a 119 and I think two 118s. I, and it is hot. I mean, like, you find excuses to stay in. Yeah. Well, you know, the, the whole thing, the whole... You know, the whole month has been it's just crazy, and even June as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're breaking records for consecutive days over 115, consecutive days over 118, obviously, because we've never been at 118 before, consecutive days over 105. You know, they're just they're breaking records everywhere. Yeah. Now, the only silver lining in this is that when the sun goes down, it is so nice to go to a restaurant uh, that's outside and, and sit outside, and it's hot. But it's only like 90, 100, something like that, and yeah. there's no sun. Well, everyone's cranking up the air conditioning so much inside. Yeah. So it's it's kind of odd. You go inside, and you get cold. Yeah. And you come out, and you walk into this 112, 113, you know, even when it's starting to cool down, you walk, wow, that feels good. That happened to me yesterday. I got cold inside of a casino, and I said, I'm going to go walk outside for a minute. Yeah. And, boy, I was outside for about two minutes. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll see. You know, we'll see how long it lasts. Uh, you know, they're predicting still high temperatures for the next couple of days, next, you know, week or so. So well, we'll see how many records we break. I don't think we're going to get over that 120, though. All right. Now, Anthony, this has become the talk of the town. This is uh, the Mirage. Everyone's talking about the Mirage for a lot of different reasons. But uh, when is it actually closing? Well, it'll close on the 17th. Okay. You know, the last day will be the 17th. Everybody's gone. The doors will be locked and closed. What we've been trying to figure out is what will be the last the closing night. Okay. You know, we talked about this last week. Uh, when I wrote the advisor last week, I was certain. I mean, I put in a lead with my byline on it. You know, I was certain it was going to be the 14th Sunday. Right. And I've now found out I was way off on that one. Um, I've got a friend who's going to be holding uh, some kind of a party on the 15th. Nice. At, at night. You know, okay. that, like an informal get together of people who have you know, been there over the years. So we know that for sure it's going to be open on the 15th, which is going to be Monday. And now, you know, everything else is pointing to it's also going to be open on the 16th. Okay. Which is Tuesday. Okay. So who knows? I mean, I'm going to be there on the 15th for a party, and then I will ask around, and if it's going to be open the next day, I will show up the next day as well. That's right. And I have my buddy Dave who asked me to go get some chips. He said, get me a $5 chip. And uh, so remember, uh, get those chips if you want. Yeah, everybody's walking away with their chips, that's for sure. Yep. You know, they're having, you know, people have been asking also about the, the giveaway. Right. You know, there, there's $1.6 million they're giving away between now and the closing and, and the 16th. Now, this is a big deal because I've actually gotten texts about this from people who don't live in the state. And they go, are you going to go to uh, the Mirage to go play? Well, the, re the reason they have to do this is that this is money that has been earned and accrued through progressive jackpots that haven't been paid. Right. So they have so, to pay this yeah, out. That money is in the jackpot. It is owed. As the meter goes up, that money is owed to the customers. Mm -hmm. So by Nevada gaming law, they cannot retain that money. They have to find a way to give it away by the end of the by the end of the day on the seventeenth. Okay. So they're doing it with giveaways. Um, it's, they're going to be like drawings, mm -hmm. and you have to earn drawing tickets, which you can do by playing, you know, the games. Uh, the slot games is a difficult one because you've got to play X number of, I think, every hour you you earn a ticket, something along those lines. Okay. So they have people that are you know sitting on machines trying to earn tickets, you know, they're having trouble with this. Right, because people don't want to leave the machines. They don't want to leave the machines. They're just kind of sitting there and doing nothing, and they're taking up space. But the thing is, they closed down half of the inventory. Oh, so, so there's only a certain number of machines even open. Right, and I've, I've been hearing all kinds of problems. I want nothing to do with that. I've heard there's a table game uh, parallel to that, where all you got to do is go and play for a couple of hands, and they'll give you, you know, a ticket. Okay. You can only get one, and you have to be there. On Friday or Saturday, Friday and Saturday night, they're going to have two drawings at 8:30 p.m. Oh wow! And they're okay. going to be picking out not just one; they're going to be picking out a lot of names. Because so it's 1.6 million that they have to give away. I may go do that. Okay. If I can get away with playing one hand on a table, 
<laughs> right, they might recognize you. I'm not supposed to, I'm not supposed to play. You know, <laughs> theoretically, I'm not supposed to play a table game. Yeah. So I'll go sit down and play for, you know, a minimum amount. Somebody says something, I'll go, fine, give me a ticket. Yeah. You know, whatever. Right. I, think, I think it'll be fine. I, I don't think there's going to be a problem with that. You know, I'm going to go down there, and I'm going to try to take some video and uh, see what we can find in the last few days and see if there's anything uh, that, that we should be talking about or posting about. Yeah, we'll be there. We'll, bo- we'll both be there. Yeah. And, you know, we'll have the camera. You'll have the camera. Yep. Definitely. I'll, I'll be walking around. Uh, I'll be the one with the Heineken. Now, also with the Mirage, they have that aquarium. What's going to What's going to happen? Well, this is yeah. This is the latest news. There, you know, they they had to get rid of everything. Yeah. You know, they're going to get rid of everything that was a Mirage. You know, they're going to get rid of the volcano. They had to get rid of the dolphins. By get rid of, I mean relocate. Mm-hmm. They had to relocate the tigers. Mm-hmm. And the last thing remaining was the fish from the aquarium. So when you think back to the Mirage when it opened, they talk about the atrium. Right. Right. And they talk about. You know, all the different things that they did there, the big showroom and so on and so forth, the walkway from the, uh, from the street. Yeah, it was a moving, big draw. Yeah, the moving walkway. But one of the things was the, the fish aqua- aquarium. And that was a big deal. Steve Wentz talked about it a, a hundred times, you know, mm-hmm. about how important it was to have that aquarium up front so the guests could, while they were waiting in lines, they could watch the fish and it would soothe them and, and so forth. So they've got to move the fish, obviously. Right. So where, where do they move the fish? They're moving the fish to Shark Reef. Okay. At Mandalay Bay. Right. There you go. Is that a good idea for the fish? They're going to put well, them in with the sharks? Oh, yeah. Okay. I didn't really think about that. <laughs> okay. So they're going to feed them to the sharks. I don't think so. I mean, I think that they, I don't think they would do that because right. these are, you know, there's, uh, I guess, 85 different species of fish. Yeah. And I don't think it's, I don't think it's shark food that yeah. they want it to be. So they must be able to, you know, they're coexist. They're going to expand. They're going to, you know. I think they can coexist together. Yeah. And the shark eat other things. But there's 450 fish, apparently. Yeah. That they're going to move over, and they're going to throw them in with the sharks. All right. And you know we were talking about the heat record, but there's more records in town. Uh, this one's in regards to the WSOP, the World Series of Poker main event, which is going on right now. Yeah, they broke it, uh, you know, from last year. They broke it. Uh, last year they had uh, over 10,000. They mm-hmm. didn't think, um, or I didn't think they were going to hit it, but they got to 10,112. And it turns out to be uh, 69 more than last year. Wow. So, um, yeah, they did it. Good for them, you know. Um, Which is over $100 million in buy-ins. Yeah, the, yeah, the winner, the, yeah, it's, these are 10000 apiece. Ten, over 10,000 people, 10,112 people play, paid 10000 or won it through, you know, some sort of a satellite that earned 10000 mm-hmm. um, You know, this is $10 million to the winner. They made a little adjustment there. Uh, last year was $12 million. That's right. Even though they got more, they're going down to ten, so they can pay more. And one of those areas they're going to pay more is the final table. All nine players at the final table will make a minimum of one million dollars. There we go. All right. The uh, the pay cut level, the you know what they call the bubble, making the money, one thousand five hundred seventeenth place. Okay. All right. So from there, the least anybody would get would be fifteen uh, k. Okay. All right. So they put up ten, they get fifteen if they make it. They're into the bubble. They're now, um, as of today, now, as we film this, they've been playing again for about an hour, Mm -hmm. hour and a half. But before they started playing, 464 were left, only 464 out of the 10,000. Right. All right. The leader is a guy named Steven Song, 4.7 million in chips. Um, Adrian Mateos, 4.5 million in chips. Okay. And there's not a lot of big names left. Okay. Interesting. Which is usually the thing. You know, the big names... There's, there's too many competitors, and, you know, they get, they get knocked out. Along the way, they get knocked out. The names that I saw that are still left here, we've got um, Tony Dunst, $1.3 million. Okay. Uh, Tony's a known player. Tony is also one of my authors. Okay, yeah, that's what I was going to ask is, who do you know that's still in? Yeah, Tony is, uh, he was one of the uh, co-authors of uh, Flop Turn River. Okay. All right, good book. So Tony's in there with $1.3 million. Phil Ivey. Okay, right, of the great course. Phil Ivey is, is still in with 650000 Okay. Uh, Maria Ho, uh, female. Mm-hmm. Okay, so she's still in. Maria's a very good player, known for being on uh, The Amazing Race, I think it was. Oh, really? Okay, I yeah. don't know her. Maria's a, um, she's a good poker player, and she's uh, somewhat of a celebrity Hollywood. She's still in, and for anyone who's interested, there are no more remaining you know, uh, champions from the past. Okay. So the last remaining champion was uh, a guy named Joe McKeon. Mm-hmm. And uh, I'm not sure what he went out, but he's out. They're all out now. You know, and some people might be wondering, if you're in 464th place, I mean, let's say you went out today. Yeah. And I think one guy had like a dollar or $100 left or something or whatever. You get 37500 
That's a nice payday. Yep. So everyone who's left is going to make a million of thirty-seven, uh, a minimum of thirty-seven five. There we go, guys. That's uh, that's a lot of fun. And also, we like to say at the, the World Series of Poker, you can go watch for free. Yeah, you can go watch it. I mean, this is day five. Um, I think it ends on Thursday. I think it ends the same day the Mirage is closing. Okay. So yeah, if you want to get down there, if you're in town, you can go watch for free. You can watch the final table. It's kind of a bucket list thing. Yeah, kind of definitely. A cool bucket list thing to do. You get some action on the strip. All right, and now we have some interesting dining news and a dining recommendation. Yeah, it seems like uh, people like our recommendations, so we're yeah. going to throw one in. But first is uh, a couple of closures, a couple of high, you know, high-profile closures. We we talked about Picasso closing yeah. at Bellagio, and Picasso Picasso for a long time was the restaurant in Vegas, mm -hmm. you know, and and then a few others came in and. Uh, Stole some thunder, but Picasso was a big deal, and they've announced that's going to close in August. We knew it was going to close, but we didn't know when. Mm -hmm. I think August 8th or 9th, something like that. And Win Las Vegas has just announced the closing of Lakeside. And that was a really popular restaurant. Yeah, one of their originals, I believe. Um, a real nice place to eat. And uh, they're closing that. They're going to put in a Mediterranean restaurant, which seems to be all the rage right now. Everybody wants to put in a Mediterranean restaurant. Right. In Vegas, man. I'll tell you, sheep. You know, well, the, the Mediterranean follow. diet is supposed to be hot right now. Yeah, but I don't think that's what that's about. <laughs> you know, <laughs> Vegas, I swear, there's such sheep. You yeah. know, one, the casinos, one does it, they all do it. You know, you think back to Tito, ticket in, ticket out, technology. Nobody would do it. Finally, somebody did it, and someone seemed to like it, and now everybody does it. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, it's all Tito's. But anyway, so our recommendation. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, yeah, give us the recommendation, Anthony. Uh, we've eaten here before. Yeah, this is, I'll tell you, it's one of my favorite places. Mm -hmm. When people ask me, they go, you know, what's a gem? You know, what's a hidden gem? Tres Cazuelas. Yes. Artisanal Latin Cuisine. Okay. It's uh, located at 3355 Spring Mountain. Mm-hmm. Right around the corner from our office. That's right. And so it's right by the Rio. Yep, right as you're getting into Chinatown. Yes, and it's uh, next door, for, for those who know, is a point of reference. It's next door to the Sand Dollar. The awesome Sand Dollar right. where you get live music most nights of the week. Yeah. Now, here's the thing about Trace Cazuelas. It's just, it's, it's Latin cuisine. It's not Spanish, you know, like people go, well, is it like Mexican food? You know, there's a lot of good Mexican restaurants. It's Latin, mm -hmm. you know, and it's, there's, a, there's a different nuance to this food, like more Spanish, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. They're big on paellas. If you like paella, you know, the mixture, the rice mixtures with all the different seafoods and, and whatever, however they make it, they do all several different kinds of paellas. Mm -hmm. But the reason we're bringing it up right now is they have a deal going on during, the, they call it the summer special. Okay. And all steak dishes are 50% uh, off. And I've been eating a lot of steak lately. There's only two or three on the menu. Steak dishes go from 38 to 65. Okay. Okay, so you're looking at starting at $19. That $19 one is called Top Sirloin Churrasco Argentino. Okay. It is fantastic. I mean, I've had it. They mm -hmm. slice the steak for you to make it any way you want. 19 bucks for that thing. Mm -hmm. Now, you want to make a real play on this uh, on Wednesdays also at the same time overlapping uh, free corkage. Wow. So, so you bring your own wine. Bring your own wine, and they don't charge a corkage fee. Okay. You know, they usually have some music going on. And here's the thing. I've told several people about this, and... One of the things that I tell them you've got to try, they have something called Iberico Dates. Oh, yeah. Right, these are the bacon wrap dates that you've had at a lot of different places. I don't like those, mm -hmm. except here, they're fantastic. They're absolutely fantastic. I they don't know are. what it is. Yeah. And it's like last year, well, every year before the Blackjack Ball, a bunch of my friends come in. Mm -hmm. and we go out, and they always ask me for a recommendation. And last year, it was this. It was, um, you know, uh, Trace Cazuelas. Right. And I told them, I said, try these dates. So they ordered two for the table. Everybody tasted it, and they're like, give us, give us another one. They, they ordered three, four, more, you know, whatever, more. whatever. Yeah. So I'm telling you, it's a, it's a terrific place. You can parlay it with, you know, going next door and checking out the iconic Sand Dollar Lounge. That's right. Usually and, there's all kinds of free parking. Yeah. Another thing is the owner's always there, all right? He's also the head chef, and uh, his name's Angelo. And LVAers, when you go in, uh, tell them LVA sent you. So we'll put the address, 3355 Spring Mountain, Terrific place. I've never been let down. Uh, Trace Casuelas. And this week's question of the week comes to us from the comments. Now, I saw this one, too, Anthony, and I was confused by it. Yeah, I understood it, I think. Okay, the question of the week was simply, you didn't follow through on the Binion Steakhouse info, question mark, question mark, question mark. 
Okay, so that's like a statement question. Yes. You didn't follow through on the thing, and it, I go, that's not a question, and then he puts three question marks, so it becomes a potent question. Right, right? so I think, I think that the question marks mean, what happened? I'm thinking we said something about it relative to the member rewards. Right. I think I don't even remember it either. Well, we got but, that great coupon in the member rewards book for the Top of Binion Steakhouse. Yeah, so that's, that, I think that's what he's talking about, so we'll tell you the details about that. But right after I saw that, I got a, t um, a text from a friend of mine yeah. who said, saved $80 at Top of Binion's last night. Couponomy. Nice. Right? So, I mean, it, it's an unbelievable coupon. Here's, here's the deal. It's 25% off your entire bill. Okay. Including alcohol. All right? So, this guy, he's a friend of mine. He went with uh, him and two other people. Three people, he saved 80 bucks. You know what that means? They were buying top-of-the-line steaks and... Big wines. Oh, yeah. So it means I mean, they're having a really nice, expensive dinner with 25% off. Yeah. So, I mean, you, see, you, can, you can get it on the wines. And what's great about this coupon is it's good for the entire table, for your entire party. Right. I've had people write to us and say, wow, we used it with six people. We used it with eight people. And they take 25% right off the top. So we talk about, you know, master coupons and the member rewards. You know, the two-to-one buffet where you're going to save close to 70 bucks at the Palms. All of the, you know, the saving of resort fees at Rio and, and Downtown Grand. This is another one that, you know, is going to, in one use, probably save you the amount of the $50 membership. You know, and when I talk to people who are visiting Vegas, a lot of people are going downtown now. Yeah. So, I mean, and everybody wants a splurge. Mm -hmm. You want a big dining splurge while you're in Vegas. So this is a great way to do it and save, you know, 100 bucks. Yeah. Probably. So, so it's, you know, a little bit of a, uh, uh, an ad for LVA, but... I want people to know about it because yeah. it's super strong. It's another reason to buy the coupon book, and uh, it was a great excuse to use your word, uh, your catchphrase, couponomy. Couponomy. <laughs> yeah, the extraction via coupon. That goes back to Peter Griffin again. Yeah. Every time we bring up Peter Griffin, not the family guy, yeah. he came up with it. Couponomy, O-M-Y, means to extract. So extract via coupon is couponomy. couponomy. All right, and this is a fun one. Uh, in Jackpot of the Week, this week, uh, it comes from Chris D., which is uh, a buddy of yours, Anthony, and it is uh, Dad getting a hand pay at the horseshoe, or as Dad calls it, the horse hoe. Let's show it. The big guy was on it. We just changed seats because my card's in. We're getting a hand pay. We got one. We kept three to the Royal after good tutelage. Yeah, he got two of them up here. Beautiful. Ba -ba -bum -bum. Uh, yeah, the, the horse ho. Look, if you take horseshoe and you break it up, right? It's horse ho? Horse is ho, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <ex> <laughs> horse is ho, right, yeah. exactly, without the apostrophe. Um, all right, so we wanted a quickie this week. Yeah. And I did this for a few reasons. One is Chris is a buddy of mine. Um, two is um, his dad hit it on Mother's Day. That's cool. So father hit it on Mother's Day. Playing I with, thought, playing thought that was kind of cool. Yeah. Family right? playing together, I like. And I'll tell you a third in a minute. So real quickly, there's not a lot to talk about this one. He's playing 7-5 bonus poker, 98.01%. Mm -hmm. um, you know, decent game, triple play, dollars. You know, hit it, smacked it, you know, got the t filled it with two. Uh, got his $4,000 royal. Nice. Good for you. Fantastic. Um, another reason that we showed this is that Chris got married last year mm -hmm. at a very interesting place. It was the uh, Rain Man Suite at, uh, at, at uh, Caesars. Yeah, the Rain Man Suite at Caesars. Yeah. People, uh, you know, was, the movie was out a long time ago. Yeah, but I, and everybody's always asking about that. It's still there. I was there at the wedding. Yeah. I uh, took footage. Mm -hmm. I've been meaning to show it here so people can see what the Rain Man Suite looks like. Yeah. And finally, this jogged my memory. And we didn't have time to put it together today, but in the next one or the one after, we will show you the Rain Man suite and a wedding there, and you can see what it looks like. All right. And maybe you want to check out the movie Rain Man, if you don't even remember. It's the Tom Cruise, Dustin Hoffman uh, movie. Well, when we do that, I'll tell a Rain Man story, too. I got, oh. a I got a couple on that one. All right. That's it for this week. Thank you for liking, sharing, and subscribing. Uh, stay cool. And Anthony, do you have anything else to add? Um, just, you know, again, I've, like I've been bringing up those reviews that uh, our viewers have been putting up on Google and Yelp are great. Yep. And it's like, you know, it's funny, like what I, I mentioned earlier about my buddy George sending me the uh, thing about saving the money at Binion's Horseshoe. Yeah. I mean, at Binion's, it's not the horseshoe anymore. And I told him, I said, hey, thanks for telling me. But go put it up on a, put that, write what you wrote to me, put it on Google and Yelp. Yeah, because people read that stuff. Yeah, and that's what brings us, that's what brings us, the, you know, the customers and allows us to make the deals with the casinos. So, you know, we're going to keep asking because yep. it, it really is important. That's it for this week. We'll see you next week. Well, I'm going to 